Good day and welcome back to our Super Data Science YouTube channel. We are focusing today again on Tableau and we are looking at common mistakes in Tableau. And we'll also be looking how to fix them, obviously. The first pitfall, the confusion between discrete and continuous measures. Now, if we just take a simple visualization such as the sum of sales and take that over um, and over the order date, for instance, by putting that in the columns, and we have a look at what Tableau generates for us. Let's focus on month. Now, you'll see that um, we, have by default, are given the discrete dimension of month. Now, how we can identify that is firstly by the blue pill, and it is in the first section of dates. You'll see there's two sections. But more importantly, on your visualization, you can also see Tableau has actually created the data or have put the data into categorical variables from January through to December. It doesn't have a year, so what, uh, what the discrete measures are, they are basically breaking it down into categorical variables into the specific element of the date that you want to visualize. On the other hand, we also have continuous dates, and that would be um, where the full date is actually being portrayed within your visualization, or the full uh, part, parts of the date. For instance, if we select the month of continuous date, you'll see that now we've got month and year, it's obviously showing it now on the timeline for us, running across the years, and also now it is a green pull, and that's how you could know how that would be. So basically you can see the biggest differentiator between the two is that discrete measures are categorical variables, as well as continuous measures are actually based on the normal flow of time. The next common mistake is the dual axis and not syncing the axes. So for instance, let's take um, sales again over yeah let's do it over dates again and this time we'll actually also use the let's use the quarter the continuous measure so we can see over time how that has happened but we also want to compare the profit to that and we can portray them obviously in two different charts however we are able to put them into a dual axis chart where we can see both at the same time the safe space and also helps us to compare the measures so what we can see now uh, based on this visualization is that profit and sales are quite close together, which is not the fact. You can see that the sales value is almost 180,000 for that specific quarter where the profit is 21,000. So obviously they're not in the same region. And the reason is that for our axis is not being synchronized. If we do synchronize it now, you can see that it actually has it in the same scale. And now we can see the actual values and how they actually relate to each other. Do be careful here, this can lead to some very embarrassing feedback sessions to your stakeholders if not done and incorrect conclusions drawn. Next, we've also have uh, the different levels of aggregation. Now this one pops up quite a number of times in our course where we ask what is the difference. So I'm just gonna delete the profit ratio for now and we'll recreate that. So let's create the profit ratio by creating a calculated field and we can call this profit ratio and this will be the non-aggregated one. So we would be saying to calculate the profit ratio, we would normally just take the profit and we will take it by the sales. Now what that would do is for each line in our data, it would calculate, it would take the profit and take that over sales on the each individual lines. If you later on put it into your visualization, it would, and you know, and apply an aggregation, it would apply it on the result of this. I will just add that in and we can create another. And we'll call this our profit ratio of the aggregated measures. So now we will just say the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales. And what that in essence is doing is first aggregating the profit number per our uh, level of detail in our visualization and separately doing the sum of sales and then only dividing it and performing the calculation. So to prove that to you, we'll just take segment and we'll be looking at, as we mentioned, profit and sales just into a normal text table. We can then put in the aggregated and the non-aggregated. Um, well, let's just move them to the bottom. Aggregate, aggregate and non-aggregated values we've uh, just created. We'll take the average just move change that to the average and we'll just quick do a quick format as well just to show them as a percentage with one decimal and the same with the next uh, just change that up quickly as well 
Now, what you what that you would see now is that when we do take for the let's just make that a bit bigger for the non-aggregated we get a fourteen point three percent, but for the aggregated profit ratio we get a fourteen percent. Now, this is not a big difference. You can take obviously your calculator as well and work it out for yourself, and you'll get to the fourteen percent. However, it doesn't look like a big difference, and you would say, why bother? Well, if you replace the segment with city, all of a sudden you can see the differences are sometimes quite significant and can lead to incorrect results. Speaking of city, that takes us to our next pitfall in Tableau. So when you use city names, be careful if they're not properly in a hierarchy. What I mean with that is, let's take the sum of sales for instance once again. And I actually just want to put this in a text table and we want to show it by city into the rows. So this is basically a list of all the cities in the United States and the sum of sales. Now if I for instance just add in the city as a um, filter, we'll just take a city by the name of Springfield for instance, because you might be asked, so what is the sum of sales for, or the sales for Springfield, and you would come to 43,000. What makes this a problem using it only with the city value like that is that there are multiple cities called Springfield in the United States and in our data set at the moment. So it's always best to use the full path of the location. So we can just take that out and if I put in city once again, well country, state and city just to make sure that we use the correct ones, you can see now that our city um, for Springfield has different values and should not be aggregated if we only have a focus on a specific state. So do be careful with this one as well. Lastly, we look at quickly building a dashboard and a lot of the time people choose the floating method and putting floating charts into your dashboard makes it so difficult to get the spacing and order right of your dashboard. And for that reason, do not use floating, rather use tiled. With that, if you do place them into your visualization, you can see that it automatically spaces it properly for you. And that makes it obviously look much better and easier to work with. So if you do resize it now, it is a way easier to work with. The other thing as well is if you do sometimes have such white spaces, which you want to obviously fill, and then this also comes in handy when you stuff like um, pie charts, use the entire fit view and not the standard view. You'll see sometimes with some of the visualizations it comes through automatic as the entire view, for some not, and you can just change it to entire view and it will use the full space within your visualization. And that was our episode on common mistakes within Tableau. Uh, do let us know what your common mistakes are so we can learn from each other and let us know what you thought of the video and what further topics you would like to see. Do stay tuned and be subscribed to our YouTube channel as we've got some more exciting content coming up shortly. Until we meet again next time.